Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about SD cards. These are used to store data on cameras, smartphones and many other media devices. They also come in a great many specifications. Standard size SD cards were first developed in 1999. Smaller mini cards then came on the market in 2003 to allow data to be stored on some mobile phones. Even smaller micro cards arrived in 2005. While the larger cards cannot fit in smaller slots, micro and mini adapters are available. SD cards also come in three capacity types known as SD SDHC and SDXC. The first of these can store up to 2 gigabytes of data. SD high capacity cards then range from 4 to 32 gigabytes, while SD extended capacity cards start at 32 gigabytes and rise to a theoretical 2 terabytes. Not all SD devices can access all capacity types. While standard cards can be read by anything, to avoid corruption SDHC cards should only be inserted into SDHC or SDXC devices. SDXC cards must then only be used with the latest SDXC hardware. SD cards are also currently available in 5 speed classes. These are known as class 2, class 4, class 6, class 10 and UHS-1. The higher an SD card speed class, the faster it will be but the more it will cost. For most purposes, class 4 or class 6 cards are fine. This said, class 10 or UHS-1 are best for high definition video or when otherwise handling large quantities of data. To demonstrate the differences, I'm going to copy half a gigabyte of files to a card of each class. To do this, I'm using a Lexar USB 3 reader, which is currently the fastest on the market. The cards being tested are a Class 2 Kingston, a Class 4 Optima, a Class 6 SanDisk Extreme 3, a Class 10 Panasonic, and a UHS-1 SanDisk Extreme Pro. Here you can see each copy in progress, with the UHS-1 SanDisk Extreme card taking less than 15 seconds to copy the 8 test files. The SanDisk Class 6 card then comes in at about 27 seconds, beating the theoretically faster Class 10 Panasonic at 29 seconds and proving perhaps why so many people buy SanDisk. The Class 4 Optima then takes about 50 seconds to copy half a gigabyte which is still not bad and far faster than the Class 2 Kingston. OK, we've just looked at SD card specifications. But just how robust are these things? SanDisk claim their Extreme Pro cards to be waterproof and shockproof. I didn't want to test this out on such an expensive card, so decided to experiment with an old Kingston Class 2. This I placed in a container half frozen with ice before adding some more water. Next I placed the container in a freezer and left it overnight. In the morning this resulted in an SD card completely frozen in the middle of a block of ice. For a shock test I then dropped this one metre onto concrete. I next poured on boiling water to rapidly melt away the remaining ice. As you can see, the card survived physically intact, so I left it to dry out before inserting it into my netbook. It then mounted perfectly happily with the pictures I'd previously stored loading perfectly. For good measure, I also ran a disk check which reported no problems.
Many people now use SD cards in their cameras, smartphones and tablets. However, far fewer use them as a general data store. This is a pity given how small and robust SD cards actually are. Many people could fit an SD card in their wallet or purse to keep valuable files safe. SD cards are also very easy to hide almost anywhere to provide an additional backup of critical files. More information on SD cards can be found in the storage section of explainingcomputers.com. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.